Mr. Steve Williams, That's welcome us. to Cleantech Gig. Thank you very much. We are 2021 here in November, 2021 here in uh, in Birmingham, the NEC. Yep. After two years. Yeah. It's good to first be back. Sort of, first sort of conference, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you to Taravin, first of all, for organizing all of that. Um, what are your first impressions? It's busy. That's my first impression. It's good. Everybody's lively. Everybody's smiling. Everyone's glad to be back. You know, everyone's felt very oppressed, I think, by the last two years. So I think, like, the coil spring has been let off, and we're all just glad to be with each other again. Yeah, it's yeah, good. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is the sort of same feeling that we got from uh, from conferences around around Europe as well. It's just that sort of, you know, let's get back together, let's do things. Absolutely. Um, and I think this was one of the key uh, themes discussed also in, in COP26. I, I saw businesses that were saying, regardless of what they, the business leaders are doing, you know, we're going to do things, we're going to make things work. What, what's, what's, your, what's your spin? What's your take on it? Yeah, I agree. I think that we've gone through a, a winter, a business winter. I think times have been very tough for a lot of businesses. I think that it's been tough for people working within businesses. As a business owner, multiple business owner, it's been hard sort of spinning on all the plates and juggling all the balls. Um, but after a winter follows spring. And this is springtime. This is all full of opportunity. This is putting seeds in the soil. This is about anticipated growth. So yeah, I think it's a really exciting time. So I know you very well, but do us a favor, introduce Clean, Clean Solar Solutions. Who is CSS? So Clean Solar Solutions, we're a solar maintenance company. Our specialism is cleaning, but we've expanded into other forms of maintenance. I personally came from the window cleaning industry prior to Clean Solar Solutions. A window cleaning customer asked me to clean their solar panels. That's a story all of its own, but it led me into the industry that is now 90% of my time is spent in this solar industry. I find it exciting. I find it interesting. Um, I think that my foundation in the window cleaning industry brings me something different. I think it gives me a different angle to a lot of people in the room. So I find it all really, really quite interesting. And then as a, as a company, we landed a national contract with a utility scale uh, company very, very early on. That was what sort of set the balls in motion for the company as a whole. And then as soon as you can put their logo on your website, the rest of the business will follow. <laughs> and so as a result, we've managed to enjoy uh, national expansion within three months of the business starting. And within, uh, I think the first four years of the company, we're operating in five different countries. And then we've got further anticipated growth next year into Belgium and the Netherlands. So it's, uh, it's an exciting time. What motivates you to come into this business? What was your personal motivation? And I know you're going to speak about it tomorrow morning. I'm looking for, forward to it, but what is your, your personal spin around it? I recognize the niche in the industry, not from a money-making point of view, but from a lack of information point of view. I heard many people in my early days as I walked around these shows talking about self-cleaning solar panels. And I thought, well, that, that ain't going to work. Um, so I knew that they, there was a, an information process that needed to, a message really that needed to be spread. So I was like, well, I feel I know enough about glass cleaning from my window cleaning days to talk about glass cleaning in this industry. And I've always tried to educate as I go. And I believe the, the, the clean solar solutions ethos is that education is our marketing. That's really, really important. The more I can educate clients, the more clients are going to come to us. And that's what sort of got me coming in the industry in the first place is recognizing these people have massive potential. But there's a gaping hole in the knowledge base. So all I've tried to do is fill that. But what we know now in cleaning, especially within the framework of the UK solar cleaning industry, comes from you. You've been one of the pioneers that started building up the knowledge and sharing results and sharing your your hard lessons with, with everybody. And you had a, a you know a, a small booklet produced about uh, liking and all yep. of that. So uh, so do you feel open? Do you feel that? somebody's taking your IP if, if you're sharing things with people? There's the potential for that. But you know what? There's enough solar in store for everybody. This country will take multiple cleaning companies like mine. I can't clean every solar panel in this country. I'd like to. That's what I, I never like to see anybody else cleaning panels. <laughs> it always upsets me if I see somebody else cleaning a panel, but it's going to happen. And I think that we can take you know, all of the new installations without the retrofit stuff, just the future of solar in this country opens the door massively for multiple cleaning companies and companies like mine to expand a lot more as well. I mean, we, we have multiple offices in the UK. We're always looking to expand. So 
too big, there isn't such a thing. You can never be too big. You can just be big enough and cope with the market demands. So that's that's all we're trying to do. So Steve, that's that's all really nice, but especially in the last few years, we've seen that a lot of services have been commoditized in a sense. Mm -hmm. How, so what sort of countermeasures do you bring as a business when it comes to pressure on prices, to people that they want the same sort of level of services or higher quality of services for you know lower cost yeah so there's duality of purpose that we've got as regards that really we go down two routes we've always tried to be the best at what we do to be pioneers at what we do i always say to my staff we're a cutting edge company for solar panel clean in the uk particularly on rooftops um, so that's one way we try to excel the reporting that we offer to our clients, we try to make much more than just a here's a dirty panel, here's a clean panel report. We try to include much more information than that. So it's about value. You know, I, I never go into a tender hoping to be the cheapest because who wants to be the cheapest? We're not interested in being the cheapest, we're interested in being best value. And so best value often doesn't require the cheapest price tag. It just requires that you have exceptional people doing an exceptional job and people then will pay a premium price for that. But you've been one of the pioneers on utilizing also innovative equipment in the forms of robotic cleaning. So tell us a bit about that as well. Yeah, so robots have always been on my mind. I recognize when I first came into the industry, rubbing brushes up and down the panels was hard work physically. It wasn't very uh, productive time-wise. So I recognize we always needed to automate the process, but the robot technology wasn't where I needed it to be. It was either unreliable or it wasn't fast enough or it was too expensive. And then as time progressed, eventually um, robots have developed to the standard where I feel I can utilize them. So when it reached that standard, I was like, right, okay, now is my time to buy a robot. So we were the first ones in the UK to have uh, robot technology, cleaning robot technology, which was really, really good. That sort of set us as it gave us a USP all over again from the very beginning. We've always tried to have a USP that gave us another. That's really important because it, it adds another layer of safety into the elements as well is that we don't have guys walking around on roofs to the same extent as we used to. They can very often now clean using a cherry picker, get the robot on the roof, load it on there, get back into the cherry picker, remote control, and we drive the robot up and down the roads cleaning the solar panels. So it's quicker, it gives a uniform job. That's another thing with standards. When you're dealing with different people, everyone has a different impression about what a clean solar panel actually is. So with a robot, you get a uniform finish. It's quicker, it's safer, uniform finish. You know, it's, it's a great fit. You're talking about safety and I know because I'm participating as well, you're leading the rooftop solar uh, guide yep. of how do you service a rooftop system. There is lack of knowledge out there. Uh, 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 what do you see from your day-to-day -day experience, both from the residential as well on the CNI side of things? So to a large degree, uh, residential installs were done shoddily. Um, the components seem to be quite good in the main. But the installation there's a lot to be desired from that and i think a lot of that is again lack of education back in the early days with constraints of feeding tariffs and pressures when there were feeding tariff drops i think a lot of people just assigned a load of roofers go and put all that on the roof for me and i'll come along into the final connection um, so there's an awful lot of poor workmanship out there on the residential side the commercial side we find that people still went into this idea of uh, they don't need cleaning and there's still a small element of that remaining, I think. It's, it's nowhere near as widespread as it was, but people tend to let their systems degrade to a point where they're losing tens of percent of output. Then they go, oh, we need to do something about this. They go up there, they find either there's a load of lichen on the panels or seagulls have nested all over the roof and they're absolutely covering the solar panels with bird droppings. But they're not thought long-term. They've just been, there's a massive roof, let's fill it all with solar. And, um, and then we'll worry about maintenance another day. But I think the attitude toward that is changing. It's not changed, I don't think yet. But hopefully the rooftop o &M guidelines will inform installers and system designers to make them realize just because there's X amount of space of roof that will fit solar, don't fill it all. You need to have safe access to the roof. You need to be able to access all of that roof safely while you're up there. What are you gonna do if the center panel of that array gets smashed? You need to access that relatively quickly and relatively cheaply. So we hope as a maintenance company that system designers are a bit more smart when it comes to looking at 
the access to the roof. I mean, cherry pickers are expensive pieces of gear. Um, you hire a cherry picker to access a roof twice a year, do that for seven years, you probably could have put a fixed staircase in place right at the beginning of the project. And then for the next 13 years of that lifetime of the project, that staircase has paid for itself and it's bringing you profit because you're not paying for a cherry picker anymore. So these are the sorts of lessons that we want the industry to learn from, to wake up to, and these are the sorts of different approaches that we want people to have. What do you think about the next sort of more difficult projects or spe special projects like floating solar or agro solar? Floating solar, you you have to deal with an environment which is unsafe. Yeah. Uh, agro solar, you're dealing again with installations which are higher than usual, but also that there is a, an intensive agricultural activity underneath them. So, how how are we going to deal with with issues? What sort of you know what is, what is your take in in terms of, for for those sort of technologies? I think you need innovative thinkers. Um, I've always tried to think a little bit outside the box. Um, some may say I look a little bit outside the box as well, but I've always tried to... Everybody recognises you, man. That's right. That's well, that's the point. That's the brand. If, yeah, absolutely. I anticipate what will be the future problem. So I give myself six months to a year to think, OK, that's going to be a problem. How are we going to solve that? So we float in solar. I mean, we cleaned our first floating solar array back in 2015. So we know now how to do this. We can do it at scale. We can do it safely. Um, we've got the qualifications and the training needed to operate working on water. So it's just a case of the market realizing where they need to go to get the service that they need. There's a massive problem with floating solar because you create in a bird sanctuary where there was no bird sanctuary. They're not going to nest on open water. But if you drop 20,000 solar panels, on there with a load, of, a load of floats, you've given them an ideal nesting place. So they come in their thousands. And then people didn't anticipate that. But I've always tried to think, right, that's the new technology. What's the likely problem? But do you think the newer projects or the projects that we develop now as an industry, do we apply lessons learned and do we take this sort of, you know, let's say OPEX calculations because you just talked about increased costs of maintenance and, and cleaning on those systems. Are we taking those into consideration or are we still into a mentality where the deal team is the king and who cares about the OPEX afterwards? To a large degree, I think that is the case, which is a shame, you know, but I think people still have to focus on the bottom line. And I, and I think that that's a real bottom shame. line of now and not 20 years. Down that's the right. They're not they're not thinking about what will this cost me three years from now if I don't clean? What's it going to cost me three years from now if I don't put the staircase in? What's it going to cost me now if I just drop 20,000 panels on a lake? People are not anticipating and not forward thinking enough. Generally, there are companies out there that are exceptions to the rule. Um, but I think generally it's just a shame that people still look at now as opposed to five years down the line. That's an interesting thought and I, I, I agree. I agree to a point. I think we, we extended, you know, the duration or lifetime duration of a, of a project up to 40 years on, a, on an Excel sheet, on a spreadsheet, without taking into consideration how we're going to make it last yeah. for 40 years. Yeah. And we're still repeating a lot of the mistakes we, we did 10 years ago. Yeah. So there is, a, a, there is a, an education and knowledge gap between perhaps all of us who started 10, 15 years ago and we, we've learned by making one mistake after the other and yeah. trying to correct things. And now the new generation that is coming after us, maybe a lot of us have taken also senior positions. So we need to somehow get what we have in our heads and you know, disseminate it down to our people. So how are we going to do that? Well, sometimes I hear the phrase mentioned that we're a mature industry. Solar is a mature industry now. In my opinion, it certainly is not a mature industry. It's very much in its infancy. We're, we're 10 years into however long this cycle of solar installation will continue on for. Um, if we take the autom automotive industry, that's a mature industry. They know how to build a car. They pretty much know how that car is going to perform. They know how to maintain that car. They know how it's going to react on the road. They don't get many massive mistakes wrong because they know what the cars are. So I think it's down to the likes of um, me in my part of the industry and you and yours and there are other key thought leaders out there that are here today that have got quite niche specialist knowledge and it's down to us to educate yes as you said earlier that means giving some of our ip away but if it can give some of our ip away but raises the standards of the industry as a whole i think we should be willing to forsake some ip if i kept everything that i knew to myself 
I would not have allowed my industry to grow and expand. My knowledge has been shared among everybody so that we've got a standard of cleaning now, which is becoming more uniform. If I'd have kept everything unknown to myself, the standards would be all over the place, people would be working in unsafe ways. So I believe that it's down to us to educate. That, that's the key message, really. You have to forsake the I for the us, and that's what I think it needs. Final question, and I won't take much of your precious time. What's the next day for Steve and, and Clean Solar Solutions? So um, we continue to expand internationally. That's, that's the, the future for us. I do believe that we've got a global brand. I believe that the service that we've got is replicable. So I think we can easily roll it out into multiple countries. Um, I, I think that when you look at the companies, you look at Virgin, as soon as I mention Virgin, you see the Virgin logo, you, you recognize their products as Virgin Holidays and you know Richard Branson. So you have the company brand, the product brand and the personal brand. You think Apple, back in the day, Apple instantly we see the logo, so that's the company brand. We know iPhone, that's the product brand, and we thought Steve Jobs, that, that was the personal brand. And so I've looked at those guys, looked at their models, clean solar solutions, people know the logo. Product, cleaning, that's the product brand. I, dr I don't dress like this and look like this by accident, as you said earlier, it gets me remembered. So this is the personal brand, the lively, vibrant, crazy looking guy that wanders around the shows. And so, those three elements of successful business I'm trying to replicate with Clean Solar Solutions, but we have to be credible. It's no good looking good and sounding good and having a great product. You've got to deliver projects. And so that's above all what we do. As a team, as a business, we deliver our projects. If I can't do a job, I'm going to come to you and say, Patrick, I can't do that. But equally, if I can do it, we will bend over backwards and make sure we deliver that project. And so that's what Clean Solar Solutions hopefully will continue to go on to do. Um, we will continue to deliver what we say we can deliver. Thank you very much, Steve. No problem. Thank you very much.